So no matter what the problem looks like, start by looking for a GCF. Because if you can take that out, it'll make your number smaller and it'll help you, um, one, get it correct because it'll help you fully factor. So no matter what the problem, first thing we look for is a GCF. After we look for a GCF and then obviously take it out, then we're going to look for difference of squares. So we're going to look to see, do we have a binomial? Is there, are they perfect squares? Are they being subtracted? Because if you do, if you took out a GCF and then you have difference of squares, then, then you're done. But let's say you t look for a GCF, you look for difference of squares, and you don't have difference of squares, then you do your trinomial factor. <clears throat> so when you start getting these different types of factoring all mixed together, you're going to just kind of run through this checklist to see which ones you're going to do. Okay? Because slowly we're going to start putting them together where you're going to have all the types on one, not just trinomials. Okay? So in every problem today, I'm going to run through this checklist just to start building that habit for us. So if we look at number one here, do we have a GCF? So is there anything in common between all three of those? No. Do we have a difference of squares? No, because it's, it's a trinomial, not a binomial. So right there we can jump to our trinomial factoring, which is what we did yesterday. So let's start by putting our two parentheses and looking at factors of 4x squared. So what are two things that multiply to 4x squared? 2x and x or 2x and 2x, sorry. And what about negative 5? Okay, negative 5, 1. Check the outer product plus the inner product. So 2 plus negative 10 haven't quite hit the negative 19. So what else might we try? Switch which ones? the negative 1 and 5. So switch not only locations but signs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 10x minus 2x gives us 8. So we're still not quite there. Can Rosemary? change the first one to 4x? Okay, so change it to 4x and 1x. So go to different factors. And then what would you like to do with the 5 and the 1? This side? No, that side. This side? No, the other side. This side? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Five? Then five or negative five? Negative five. Okay. And then positive one. Positive one. So negative 20 plus one gives us negative 19. So then we'd have 4x plus one, x minus five. Okay, so on number two, do we have a GCF? Anything in common between those terms? No. Is it difference of squares? <coughs> no, it's a trinomial. So then we can go ahead and start our factoring. So two things that multiply to y squared. Y and y. Two things, oops, I wrote that wrong. That should be a plus sign. Two things that multiply to one. Well, negative one and it's supposed to be a plus one. So negative, one and negative, one. negative one and negative one. So we have negative one plus negative one will give us negative two. So y minus one, y minus one. If you ever get an answer like this where you have the same thing in both binomials, you can write it as y minus one squared. So just like how when we multiplied these, we separated. If you get the same thing twice, you can combine it to be this. 
If you left at y minus 1 times y minus 1, I'd still give you full credit. Okay, so don't feel like you have to remember that step. But if you do, it's a good thing. Okay, number three. Do we have a GCF? No. Is it difference of squares? No. Okay, so then let's do our trinomial factoring. Wait, what is difference of squares? <coughs> The difference of squares is the one that looks like a squared minus b squared, and we factored it by square rooting each one, and then we put a plus sign in one, a minus in the other. That's what we're, so we're looking for this, the binomial, perfect squares, and subtraction. Okay, so what are some things that multiply to 6 or 6k squared? Which one? 2 and 3, so 2k and 3k. What are some things that multiply to 2? 1 and 2. Mm, any particular spots you want the 1 and the 2? 1 first, 2 second. 1 first, 2 second. So we have 4k and 3k gets us our 7k. <clears throat> Is anyone able to start doing some of this in your head, like following the patterns? Okay. If not, that's okay. We can still list them out and write it. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, what about number four? Is it, is there a GCF? Any, nothing in common. Is it difference of squares? No. So that means we're going to do our trinomial factoring. So what are some things that multiply to 3w squared? 3w. 3w and w. Okay, now we need negative 10. So what are some things that multiply to negative 10? Negative 5 and 2. Negative 5 and 2. Any particular spots you want them? You can just put them somewhere and go from there. Okay, so let's see. We have positive 6, negative 5. That gives us positive 1. So we're close. Anyone see what we might be able to change to make it negative 1 instead of positive 1? <coughs> it's actually just switching the signs. Okay, because what we want to do, because we have the numbers in the right spot, but we need the bigger number to be negative. So 3w times negative 2 will give us negative 6, plus 5 will give us our negative 1. So usually if you have the right number but just the wrong sign, usually it's just a switching of, a, of negatives that will get you on the right track. All right, number five. Start with GCF. Is there a GCF? Four. So let's take out a four. So that'll give us five n squared minus 13 n minus six. Okay, now looking at what's left inside, do we have difference of squares? No. So we're going to go to our trinomial factoring with what's inside. So two things that multiply to 5n squared. <coughs> 5n and n. Two things that multiply to negative 6. negative 2 and 3. Okay, so again, now our goal is negative 13. So 15 minus 2 gets us our positive. So if we switch the negatives, we'll get our negative 15 
plus 2 to get our negative 13. So 5n plus 2, n minus 3, and all of this with that 4 on the outside is your answer. Okay, so one of the things that's really common when we take out a GCF is we forget to include it in the answer. So make sure you include that GCF in your final answer. Bless you. You okay? All right, last one here. Start with GCF. Is there a GCF? What's our GCF? Three. So then we'll divide all of our numbers by three. Oops, minus, not plus. Okay. With what's left inside, do we have difference of squares? Nope. So we're going to go to our trinomial factoring. <clears throat> so two things that multiply to 2a squared. 2a and a. And then two things that multiply to negative 9. Okay, negative 3 and 3. So if we, with where I put them, um, we can do our outside and get 6a. Inside is negative 3a. That does, in fact, add up to 3. So we'll have 2a minus 3, a plus 3. And again, don't forget to include in your final answer that GCF. Okay, so some of your problems today are going to have this GCF that you might have to take out first. But it, like I said, it makes your numbers smaller so that they're a little easier to manage. Now there's also another type that I want to just touch on. Can you guys go to your uh, to worksheet 6B and look at the back page of 6B, so the back side. So if we look at number 11, it says write the possible expressions for the length and width of a rectangle given the area. Well, what's area of a rectangle? Length times width. So we want to turn a polynomial into a product. How do we do that? How do we turn a polynomial into a product? You factor it. So on these ones, you're going to factor. And you see how it has two lines? So let's go ahead and just look at number 11 real, together real quick. So number 11. And then it wants us to figure out length and width. And it gives us two lines. OK, so let's go ahead and factor this. So what are two things that multiply to x? x and x. What are two things that multiply to 48? Negative 6 and negative 8. So again, you notice that this since this is negative, both of these had to be negative. So x minus 6, x minus 8, because negative 6 and negative 8 is negative 14. So each of these, so the x minus 6, that's called a factor x minus 8 is called a factor. So whenever it's using on this back side the words factor, it's looking for each thing that's being multiplied. So kind of like how 6 has factors 2 and 3, a polynomial has factors that are binomials. So you'd write one of these on each line. So x minus 6 is one factor, x minus 8 is the other factor. Okay, and that's pretty much what you're what it's asking for on 11 through 14 is your factoring and then just putting a factor on each line to show what each factor is. Yeah. Okay, so if you have a letter at the end, so like if I had put made this 24y squared at the end on number number five, all that means is that here I'd have y's with these second letters, second numbers. That's the only thing that changes, is you just got to include that letter there. Um, 15, 16, and 17, you're figuring out which one is not a factor. 
So that means you're going to factor the polynomial and look to see, compare your answer. Three of the things will be in your answer, one of them will not. So the one that's not part of your factored answer is your, is your one that's not a factor. Okay, the reason we're looking at these is you have a question like 15 to 17 on your test. You also have a question like 14 on your test and a question like 11 through 13. So these are all giving you practice at those kind of different wording problems that you're going to see on your test next week. Okay.